chapter 12. And in that day, thou shalt say, O Lord. He wasn't talking about right then. Isaiah was looking into a future where he can stand with liberty and say, O Lord. In the horizons of Isaiah's, Isaiah's time, there was the Assyrian army ready to pronounce or come in to Israel. On the horizon was Babylon. On the horizon was the titans of the east. They were getting ready to come into the nation. There was dark times getting ready to happen. He said, but in that day, the day that you stand in today, he says, I'm going to say, O Lord, I will praise Thee, though Thou was angry with me. Thine anger is turned away, and Thou comfortest me. Mm. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comforter. That's what the Holy Ghost is all about. He said, in the day, there's going to be a comforter come. And we're in this day today. If you need comfort today, it's in the Spirit of God. It's in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Verse 2, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He has also become my salvation. He was the father over the nation of Israel. He was a healer over the nation of Israel. But when he came to a mount called Calvary, he became a salvation for a people. Not just for a nation of Israel, but for man, whosoever will. He said, I will be your salvation. Verse 4, And in that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord. Call upon His name. Declare His doings among the people. Make mention that His name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for He hath done excellent things. This is known to all the earth. Cry out and shout, thou inhabitants of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in the midst of thee. But you notice I missed verse 3. So go back to verse 3. But verse 3 says, therefore, he said in that day first, coach, he said, now, therefore, with joy shall ye draw water out of the wells of salvation. There was an oath that Isaiah gave a people. He said, there's distress coming, but in that day there shall be wells of salvation. He said, therefore, there was no, no warning. There was no if. If this happens, it was therefore. With joy shall ye draw waters out of the wells of salvation. Why don't we just put our Bibles down one more time and let's lift a hand to Him who puts the spring of living water within our souls. It's that Holy Ghost that we have that we draw from. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated. This psalm is a psalm of thanksgiving. A psalm of praise. What Isaiah was seeing was the end of an angry God. A relenting God that was after Israel. He said, but there's coming a day. There's coming a day that there's going to be salvation. He was having to go after Israel and try to bring Israel back. Israel would go into idolatry and have to bring them back in. But there was coming a day that there was going to be a well that they're able to draw from. Just as a father... Or as the, the father of the prodigal son, there was anger. There was confusion. The son said, give me everything I want. I'm out. But when that son stepped back in, there was comfort. There was joy. Just because our father sometimes gets angry with us, it doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. He chastises those that he loves. If things are coming about you, it might just be the chastising of God because He's trying to pull you back in. He doesn't want you to get too far out of where you need to be. There's wells that are within our soul that we need to draw from. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's wells of salvation. Notice where it says there shall be wells. Not one well. But plural, wells. And I began to look at this. And, and I, I the wells, and there's a well of love. There's a well of joy. There's a well of trust. There's a well of fear. 
a well of surprise, a well of sadness, a well of disgust, a well of anger, a well of anticipation. And if you look at these, these are all emotions. But it's what we draw from. We draw from those things of our emotions. When we get angry, we, get, we draw within those emotions. And, and I began to go through what was happening. Our emotions are the wells that drive us. And as I was studying for this and, and going through, and, and, and I began to sit down yesterday. Uh, how many people are, either have connections to Bauxite or graduate? Oh, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Put it up there, Bradley. Put it up there, Bradley. Go ahead. Come on, Bradley. There we go. There we go. Uh, you can take it down. But I said, <laughs> amen. But I sat down yesterday, and I am a part of the pick and shovel. And it began to go through in Facebook. And as I sat there, I began to find pictures of my uncles when they were working at Alcoa. I found pictures of my great uncles and my grandfather when it was Norton Town before Alcoa even existed. It was Norton Town. In fact, I had pictures, Coach, of Swamp Poodle. Many of you don't know where Swamp Poodle is. There's a lot of us who don't know where Swamp Poodle is. My mother grew up in Swamp Poodle. If you want to know where Swamp Poodle is, you go to the city hall there in Boxite, the police station. And when you come to the trees, that was Swamp Poodle right there. That was part of the, the Norton town. It was a company town. But these were miners. They were digging. They were going after aluminum. And, and, and you begin to look and think about the heritage that we have. David one time was sitting at, in, a, in a hold and... And the Philistines had wrapped themselves around him. The Bible says he was in a hold in the Philistines. And they were in Bethlehem. And, and David said, oh, that I just could draw from the well of Bethlehem. There's wells in your life that you want to go back to. There's wells of familiarity. Why did David say, I wanted a drink of that well? Maybe it was were, he went back in his mind and thought about how many times maybe his mom, him and his mom would go and draw water from it. He knew that it was just cold water. It wasn't so much of the water, but it was the memories in which he was drawing from. The wells of salvation, the wells of our emotion, we draw strength from those. And David sat there and said, oh, that I could just have a drink of that well. And, and the Bible tells us that three men went in and they broke through the lines. And they got to the well. And they got a glass of the water. And they brought it back to David. And David took that water. And the first thing he did, coach, is he just chucked it back. No. What he did is he looked at that water and he realized the cost. That it cost those men to go to that well. There are wells that we have to dig in our lives that are going to cost lives. It's going to cost friendships. It's going to cost relationships. There are wells that we have within us that when there's something, there is a cost to dig and there is a cost to uncover. Going, we're going to look at uncovering these wells. Genesis 26 and verse 15. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them up and filled them with earth. See, the same tools that it takes to dig a well is the same tools it takes to uncover wells, Brother Charlie. There's no magic secret there's nothing changes within us. If you're digging a well, you've got to, and you, your well gets clogged up, you've got to use the exact same tools to unclog those wells. And here, the Bible says, and I thought it very interesting, the Bible says that, that the Philistines filled them up with earth. But it was the earth that Adam was cursed, or Jesus, the Lord cursed the ground because of Adam's sin.
What happens is there are things that we have in our lives that we fill up the wells of our life with the cursed things of the world. It's the cursed things of sin that begin to come within our, our, our hearts. It's the cursed things. It's not the things of God that curses, but it's the things of this world that begins to plug up the wells of our lives. It's the cursed things that begin to come up. So many things happen as a child. If a child is abused, there's a cursed thing of the sin that's stuck in with the well that he's growing up with. For every child that is abused, there's the earth that's being poured in to, the, to a well of love. There's things that get clogged up. And we look at these things. For each child, for each spouse, for each friend, our well of love gets clogged up. Our well of joy gets clogged up here Abraham's wells were clogged up but his son had to go back and undig them he knew where they were Isaac may have went there several times during, during the of his life. He may have been a part of digging these wells up, but he had to go back to the wells. There are wells that you dig, parents, in your, your kids' life that you're going to have to dig. There's wells of discipline that you've got to dig within your, your kids' life. They may not like it, but there's wells. And sooner or later, they may plug it up. But sooner or later, they're going to have to go back and they're going to have to uncover those wells. There's wells that we have that have been dug within us before we even know what we've been dug into. But here, Isaac is going back and he's undigging the wells. And he's looking back through what was going on. And when he began to come through and going in the same 26th chapter, said Isaac's servants digged in the well, valley and found there a well of spring water. And the herdmen of Gerar did strive with Isaac, Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water's ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac because they strove with him. You begin to uncover the wells of, of joy, the enemy's going to come in and try to clog it back up. You uncover the wells that, that sin has covered up. And when we begin to move within God, there's going to be strife. There's going to be, there's going to be things that are going to come against you. But the blessing of this is keep digging the well. Don't stop with one well. Keep digging another well. They may strive with me now, but I'm going to go dig another well because I'm going to find that water of salvation. And he digged another well and showed for there also. And he called the name of it Sitna. That word Sitna means to lie in wait, adversary, enemy, persecutor, enmity. When you start on digging the wells of salvation, when God begins to move in your heart, the enemy is going to come against you. He's going to try to fill it back up. He's going to try to clog it back up. He's going to do everything that he can to keep you from uncovering that well. But don't stop. It doesn't happen overnight. When you start digging, it doesn't stop overnight. This process of walking with God is not a one-time deal. It's not just it happens today and I'm able to walk from here on. It's a journey. It's a life. It's a walking with God. It's my life changes day to day, year to year, month to month. It has to change because I keep uncovering the wells. Don't give up when the wells begin to get clogged again. It means it's just time to unclean. And he removed from thence and diggeth another well. And for they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, now the Lord hath made room for us. And shall, we shall be fruitful in the land. Just because... We uncover wells. So it doesn't sometimes mean the water is ready to drink. James talks about can a well give bitter and sweet water. There's something that we have to have to renew that well that is within us. If you go with me to Exodus. I said in Exodus 15. 
the Israelites, three days out, out of Egypt, said, And when they came to Moriah, Mara, they could not drink of the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. It was just bitter water. Here they come to a spot. They're three days. They're thirsty. And they can't drink of it, Brother Jim. They've had no water. They've left Egypt. They're searching for something. They come to this beautiful oasis, and there's no water. There was a young lady that met Jesus at a well one day in Samaria. She sat there and she came at an odd time and Jesus sat down there. See, this woman just didn't come for water. But Brother Charlie, this woman came with bitterness. This woman, this woman came with hurt. This woman came with anguish. This woman had bitter water that was within her. And no matter how much water she drank from that well, she was always thirsty again. There was always something reaching out for her again. It doesn't matter what was going on right there. The water she was trying to get, she could not get a hold of. And she, she came up to Jesus and he sat there and he said, give me a drink of water. She said, but you're a Jew. You're of the house of Israel. He said, oh, but if you knew. Mm -mm -mm. She said, are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this well. Are you greater than this? He said, you can drink of this well. But you're going to get thirsty time you get home. He said, but I've got a well that's everlasting. I've got water that's eternal. I've got water that's springing up within me. We go back to Isaiah. He said, therefore, I will draw from the wells of salvation. It's that water of salvation he was talking about. We go back and look at this, uh, that, the, the, the uh, Exodus 15. It says, and when they came to Mara, they, were, they could not drink of it. See, what was happening is their joy now became bitter. They were coming out of Israel. They were happy when they got out. Now they came and they're bitter. A lot of us are fighting the bitterness of sin today. But if you drop down the 25th verse of that same chapter, the people cried out to Moses when they came to Mora, what are we going to drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. What the Lord was showing him was not just a tree to, show, to change the waters to sweetness. He was showing him a tree that was on Calvary. He was giving him a glimpse of a different tree. He was giving him a glimpse of a tree of life. He was giving him a tree that they, we can apply to our life. There was a blood stained tree that when we apply the blood of Jesus upon us, it changes the water from bitter to joy. It changes the water of hurt to, to healing. It changes the water of anger to peace. We have a tree that we're able to cast into the waters of our souls. And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. He said, I'm going to give you an oath. Isaac had an oath when he uncovered one well. Isaiah gave an oath about bringing up the wells of salvation, the waters of salvation. Here, Moses said, I'm going to give you an oath. I'm going to give you a promise. He said, and he said, if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases upon thee, which I have brought you upon, what I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. He said, if you will hearken to my voice, I'll keep them all away. He said, if you'll listen to my commandments, I'll keep them all away. He said, just go ahead and draw. And when he began, he gave that tree. The Bible says he took that tree and he cast it into the water and the water became sweet. Mm. We have a baptismal tank 
that holds bitter water. Because there's bitter water of sin. We've had those that were baptized. But there's a cross. There's a tree on Calvary. That when we're baptized, we're putting that tree down with us. And it's making that water sweet again. It's changing us. The repentance, when we begin to look at, our heart is changed. What Moses saw and he threw that tree in, he got a glimpse of Calvary. You have that oath in which he, Isaiah gave us to draw waters from the wells of salvation. It begins to move when we step into a, a, a body of water. Water, a baptism, it changes there, it washes our sins away. And when he fills us with our spirit, but we're not done yet. Now we gotta start digging, uncovering the wells. We've got the Holy Ghost, we've been baptized in Jesus' name, but I still gotta get the pick out, Brother Charlie, and begin to uncover the wells of hurt. I've still got to get, mm, Brother Monty, I've got to go ahead and uncover that well that I hold too much. I've kept it covered because I don't want to go back to it because it hurts too much to go back to it. I don't want to have to put a shovel to it. I don't want to have to put a pick to it because it hurts too much. It's just too great that I can't do it. But you've got to be able to get a hold of it because when Isaac got a hold of that last well, when he uncovered all the wells, the Bible said that his servants came to him and said, we found another well and it's a sweeter well. If you want a new well within your life, you've got to go back and uncover the old wells. You've got to go back and uncover the wells of hurt. You've got to go back and uncover the wells of unforgiveness. You've got to go back and uncover the things that has happened and we're too afraid to uncover. But that's what the comfort of the Holy Ghost is. Because as the Holy Ghost begins to move, Coach, it gives me strength to uncover that well one more time. How many wants a new well? Of salvation. How many wants a new well to draw from? Then we've got to go back and uncover some of the old wells. It didn't say it was going to be easy. But we've got to uncover them. That tree that Moses saw. He was looking into the future. Let's stand. He said, but how can I... Do this. Well, repentance is uncovering wells. Because I've got to get everything right. I've got to make things right between me and Brother Jim. I've got to make things right between me and God. That's where repentance starts. I'm uncovering those old wells. And it's not just a new start. There are things that happen to us every day that we have to go back and uncover. How do I throw that tree of Calvary I throw that tree of Calvary into baptism because when I'm baptized, I'm baptized into this crucifixion. I'm baptized into his death. And when that that water, uh, my well is so bitter that it begins to move and it changes me. When I come out of that well, I'm coming out with sweet water. I'm leaving the bitterness behind me. I'm leaving the sin behind me. And I'm beginning to walk in a newness of life. We were in, a, I was in a, a junior class in our Sunday school class, and uh, my, my Sunday school teacher was, uh, he was a, uh, he did a lot of Boy Scouts, and he was, he was up in the, the Pentecostal Boy Scouts, and they were doing a lot of stuff, and we went for a walk one day, and we went for a hike, and it was a three-mile hike up the mountain, and we, had, we followed this river, and this little creek going down, beautiful water cold i mean just absolutely beautiful and everybody thought we we're going to go get a drink of water so everybody starting to take a drink of water and i kind of stop and brother Darius says ah you might not want to drink that oh it's good stuff it's cool it's refreshing we got up about another mile up and there had been a deer had died and fell in that creek and blew up about half them kids threw up right there. It was over with. That water looked clear. 
That water looked refreshing, but it was bitter to taste. They needed to have something within their life that changed them. They needed to have a something within them. That's what the Holy Ghost does. It changes us. It changes from bitter to sweet. How many can say right now, you've got wells that need to be uncovered today? How many is looking for a new well today? There needs to get a hold of the pick of the Holy Ghost, a shovel of repentance, and begin to move and fill the wheelbarrow of life and dump it out. Mm. So how can I start? Start right there. You start here, you go there, and you step into a newness of life. Mm. Every head bowed, every eye closed. When Isaac was uncovering the wells, he called one of the wells Beersheba, for it was a well of oath. There is a well of oath today, and it's called Calvary. The blood that was shed upon that cross is still flowing today. With every eye closed and head bowed, how many are tired of coming back to the same old well that's covered up? How many want to reach up and begin to uncover the wells? Hallelujah. I want to open up this altar. I want to open up this altar this morning. If you haven't been baptized in Jesus' name, the well of salvation is ready but it takes a little bit there's a cost that it takes and you know what that cost is it's my life Lord you take this you change this because I can't Lord use what you have for me Use this vessel. Uncover the wells today and fill them full of sweet water. There are many here today that are fighting emotional battles right now. There are many people standing here today that is fighting anger, bitterness, and sorrow. But there's a tree on a hill called Golgotha that's ready to change your wells to sweet water. Amen. Why don't we just lift a hand to him this morning. I want to open up these altars this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you today. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. There's somebody else that needs to step to the altar this morning. I just feel it in my soul. Somebody is struggling with something this morning. No matter how many times you uncover the well, it seems that well gets covered up again. No matter how many times you go and you clean the well out, something happens and it goes again. The Lord's saying, if you'll step up right now, I'll clean that well for you. You've been trying to clean that well all by yourself. You've been trying to remove the debris by yourself. You've been trying to get the water sweet by yourself. He said, let me give you the tree tonight, today. Somebody needs to step up this morning. 
I still feel it within my soul. Somebody. Somebody needs to step up this morning and say, Lord, clean the well for me. Remove the debris. Remove the bitterness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to give it just a little bit longer. Hallelujah. There's a hunger. Hallelujah. And a thirst. I am desperate. Hallelujah. Immerse me. The Lord's talking to somebody's heart right I'm now. There is a river of life that the Lord has opened up for you. I, I appreciate that message this morning. There is a, there is a well, a, a spring, a well of life springing up into everlasting life. And it flows like a river through this place. It's a river of mercy and grace and of healing. But it's only for the thirsty. You have to understand that the thirsty, the hungry and the thirsty, they're the ones that's going to be filled. If you're not thirsty, if you don't need anything from the Lord, if, you, if you're just like, well, you know what, I, I came to church and, and I'm fine. I don't need a refreshing from that well. We've uncovered that well with our worship and with our praise, with our prayers this morning. Now it's time for you to come and drink freely. Drink freely from the river of life. I'm going to ask the church to come. I don't know about you, but I need a refreshing. I need that refreshing from that well that springs up within our hearts. Amen. Amen. Brother Bledsoe.
the Lord came to earth from his heavenly home. He taught us, he healed us, he suffered and he died to provide that healing flow, that flow of salvation of his, of his blood into our lives. I don't want, I don't know about you, I don't want to ever neglect such a great a salvation. I don't want to say, oh, I know, Lord, you died for me. You died to give me this. You got died so that I could be refreshed in your spirit. But no thanks. I'm good. I want to partake of everything that the Lord has for me. Amen. I don't want to ever neglect to go and uncover those wells of living water. Amen. Dear Lord, we love you today. So very thankful for your presence, thankful for the word that has come forth. I pray, Lord God, that it is a word that would stay with us, that we would never allow those the wells of life to be covered up with the things of this world. I pray, Lord God, that you would go with each and every one of us as we go into our homes, that your spirit would go with us. Lift us up, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You, you're dismissed. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night.